everyone, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and I thought I'd start today's video with that montage because today we're talking about sphericons, which are these very fascinating shapes that can be quite difficult to explain, but as you saw, they're very fun to watch. Sphericons have kind of been trending on the internet these past couple of weeks because of a Kickstarter campaign that's selling metal hexaspherecons. That got picked up by a really cool Instagram page called Physics Fun. And Angus over at Maker's Muse actually 3D printed some himself and did a really great video explaining exactly what spherecons are and how they work. That said, all the while I've been developing a lot of different variations based on this simple shape myself, so I'm making a video as well. I'll try to give you the basic explanation using this spherecon made out of paper. This right here is the original Spherecon shape as patented in 1980 by an Israeli toy designer named David Hirsch. And if you look at this shape face on like this, you'll see that it has the profile of a square. And that square has been revolved 180 degrees from corner to corner. Now if we look at the other side, we've got the same shape, but instead of the edge going from left to right, it goes from top to bottom. And that's because it's the same shape just rotated 90 degrees, and then the two halves have been stuck together to create this very interesting spherecon. And what defines a spherecon is that it's a rolling object that has one continuous surface and two edges. Allow me to demonstrate that with some Sharpies. First, we've got edge one over here. You'll see that makes this half circle shape. And then we'll go ahead and get the other edge. So there we go. Two semicircles. Whoop. Whoop. And then the fun part is the surface. So if we start here and we follow it around, it goes around this way, 180 degrees, and then it switches direction and goes this way. Then it goes back and forth until it ends up right back at the beginning. So as you saw, it was kind of like this wobbly S shape, and that's why it rolls along this really whimsical S shaped path. By the way, the reason that this can be made from a single piece of paper is because it's a developable surface, which means that the whole surface can be laid out flat without any sort of distortion or stretching. That's pretty interesting and definitely convenient for making these paper spherecons. By the way, if you wanna make one of these yourself, I'll put a link in the description to the website where I got the template to make this thing. They also have all kinds of different paper polyhedra, definitely worth checking out. So there's your basic spherecon, and it was that wobbly path that really inspired me, and I challenged myself to elaborate on this shape and come up with some really cool designs while still maintaining that wobbly motion. So based on this standard spherecon shape, I came up with my own geode spherecon. And if you look at it side by side, you can see some similarities, but of course it's also very different. But if you were to imagine me just filling in all these surfaces where the geode is broken away, it would basically turn back into that spherecon with some rounded edges. Since I maintained the edges of this surface, it still rolls the same way as that regular spherecon, but I was able to add this really cool decorative element by hollowing out this inside part and turning it into this really cool geo design. I also printed this in two colors using the palette plus by Mosaic, and it looks really cool with this filamentum vertigo gray PLA and this baby blue PLA on the outside. Although I definitely want to try this out with a bunch of different color combinations. I can imagine it looking really cool with a shimmering purple geode pattern and then a more natural looking rocky outside. There's definitely a lot of fun to be had with this model. Like I mentioned, the spherecon is based on a square profile, but the really cool thing about spherecons is that they can be made from any number of polygons. And my favorite is the hexaspherecon. The principle behind the hexaspherecon is the same where you have this hexagonal profile it's revolved 180 degrees, and then the other half is offset, this time by 60 degrees instead of 90. So you rotate one side 60 degrees, and then all of a sudden, we have this single continuous 
developable surface once again. This model right here is your true Sphericon with flat curving sides, these clean edges. It's all really nice and smooth, especially since I sanded this model like crazy. It was printed on the FL Sun QQ, and then I just went and did a bunch of sanding. I didn't get rid of all the sanding marks, but it feels so, so good. And it rolls really nicely as well. Yeah, the Hexaspherecon is definitely a cool one, and most of my variations are actually based on this shape. For example, we've got this one right here, which is just my sloped Hexaspherecon. It's nearly identical, except instead of those flat surfaces, I gave them a nice little swoop that adds a touch of elegance. And since only the edges make contact with the table, I think this one actually rolls a bit better. I printed this using Matterhacker's Transparent Red Pro PLA on the Ender 3, and while I was printing it, I used variable layer heights. So it starts with a 0.25 millimeter layer height up to 0.15, and at the end, there's a 0.05 millimeter layer height. And you can kind of see the transition points, but it came out super smooth. This is a wonderful print. Here we've got one that's nearly the same, but it's got slightly thicker edges, and I call this my Grooved Sphericon. This was printed with Sane Smart ABS filament, and I used acetone smoothing to make it really smooth and shiny. It's beautiful, it feels amazing. And I'm actually gonna show you guys how to make this from scratch in my next video, coming out in a day or two, where I'll show you guys all about how to make your own Sphericons. All right, these are still pretty tame, pretty standard looking Sphericons, but I wanted to ramp it up, so I got crazier. This one's really fun, I call it the Tube Hexaspherecon. It's got these really bulbous edges that are kind of like sausages wrapped around each other. And I printed this using Matterhacker's Pro Gold PLA, which has a really beautiful shine to it. This one rolls super nicely as well, and I don't know, I think it looks really fun. Next up we've got these really cool bad boys that I call Retro Sphericons, because they're based on that kind of logo design from the 70s where you have all these concentric lines. It works really well for the Sphericon look. And check out this really neat time lapse that I made on the Ender 3 printing these things out. Unfortunately, the easy peelsy build surface that I printed these on peels a little too easily, and that's why we have this gap between the parts. But I still think they turned out really cool, and they're quite weighty. You might notice that these look slightly different as well, and that's because they were rotated on different axes. So this one was rotated from point to point, like your standard Sphericon, and because of that, it still rolls in the same way as the other Hexaspherecons. This one, on the other hand, was rotated through the sides of the hexagon, and because of that, it forms a kind of anti-Sphericon. Instead of having one surface and two edges, this one has one edge and two surfaces. For that reason, it doesn't roll continuously, it kind of bounces back and forth but I actually think that's pretty cool in its own way. I did a couple variations of this retro Hexaspherecon to try to get things right, but by far my favorite and the most retro version is this one right here. Yeah, this one really captures that retro vibe thanks to this awesome paint job that my girlfriend Natalie helped out with. She painted that in, and then I sanded the edges to make them white again, and covered all of that with a gloss coat. It rolls just like all the other Hexaspherecons, but the way it looks is just next level. So cool. My greatest challenge with the Hexaspherecon was to turn one into a puzzle. But we'll get to that, that's the finale. First, I want to show you some other Sphericons made with higher sided polygons. This right here is a Septa Sphericon based on a seven sided polygon, and because it's based on an odd numbered polygon, it doesn't have that continuous rolling motion. It does have a single continuous surface, but it ends here and here, and then twists outward. Yeah, so that's the Septa Sphericon, 
And then here we have an octasphericon based on an octagon. Well, this one is one of those variations actually where it has a single edge and two surfaces, but it really just looks awesome. It's got this two color print with a baby blue sphere on the inside and then this red matter hackers PLA wrapping all around. Once you get up to polygons with this many sides, they don't roll quite as gracefully, but I just think it makes a really cool ornament, just an aesthetically interesting print. Yeah. Let's increase that edge count by one more with this nonaspherican, I guess you would call it. It's got nine sides, and in this position, it's just the revolution, but this print actually comes apart. I didn't glue it together yet. And with that, I can kind of demonstrate the different versions of this shape that you can get. If I rotate it one face, then you're left with the traditional spherecon. Although since this is an odd numbered polygon, once again, it doesn't have a continuous surface, but it does have a single surface. And interestingly enough, it also only has a single edge. Let's offset this again another 45 degrees. And now we're left with a slightly different spherecon. This one has two edges and two surfaces. But my favorite is if we switch it all the way around here, like so, that just creates a single spiraled edge that spirals all the way from one end to the other. That one looks really cool. And just in case nine edges isn't enough, check out this insane shape based on a 16 sided polygon. This one I rotated 90 degrees. So once again, it's not quite a sphere con. In fact, it has several edges and several surfaces, but it just looks really cool. All right, so there you've got all kinds of different sphere cons based on all kinds of different base polygons. But let's go back and look at this hexaspherecon puzzle that I came up with. This one's really cool. So since Angus and I were kind of working on spherecons at the same time, he challenged me to come up with a puzzle. And I immediately thought of something based on the astrolabicus, which is this really intricate puzzle that has marbles running through different channels and you rotate it and have to get all the colors touching. So I got straight to work. I came up with this design that has grooves running through it so that I could put a ball in there. And it was pretty challenging. At first, I was trying to come up with some system of little divots that cause it to lock into place into the different six positions. But as I was working on this, someone posted nearly the same thing on the 3D printing subreddit on reddit.com. It was Reddit user David the Walker X who shared his version of this puzzle, which he called the Astrolabicon. Very great name. Our approach was slightly different. He has the groove running along the edges of the hexaspherecon, while I have mine running along the side. But what I really appreciated about his design is that he just used a magnet to hold the two sides together. That was kind of a big aha moment for me because I realized that I can just make an array of six magnets on each side. And with that arrangement, the parts are held together really nice and strongly but they also snap into each of the positions that they're supposed to be so that these channels always line up. Magnets are also just some of my favorite things to design with. They're so satisfying. I mean, you guys can't feel this, but you should print your own if you've got a printer because this snapping action, ooh, next level fidget toy right here, everyone. So those magnets were definitely a big part of making this work, but I was still running into some problems. At first I was using these wooden balls and I painted them to make a full gradient from red to blue. And my idea was that you would have to get those all into the right perfect order to recreate that gradient. For one thing, this would be an extraordinarily challenging puzzle to get every single ball in the right place. But the real problem was that these wooden balls just aren't consistent enough and they were just jamming and not really rolling smoothly through the puzzle it made for a pretty frustrating experience. Puzzles are meant to be difficult, but they should still be fun to interact with. I was close to giving up there, but luckily I decided to take one more shot and instead use some glass marbles. And that ended up making all the difference. With this version, I finally got things right. The marbles move along the track really nice and smoothly, 
The two halves rotate nicely as well. It's just really fun to play around with. And the hexaspherical shape works really well for this style of puzzle. It actually makes for a very interesting puzzle because in the different positions, things behave slightly differently. So we've got this hexaspherical orientation where it's just one continuous channel of marbles and they all move together. But if you rotate it to this other position, we just have a revolved hexagon and in this position, you have three separate tracks that can all move independently. That makes for some very interesting strategies when it comes to solving this puzzle. And I haven't actually solved this puzzle just yet. I just finished building it yesterday, but I was playing around with it a bit today and it definitely seemed solvable. I got most of the way there. I still do have a slight problem because the marbles I bought aren't completely consistent. So some of these are maybe 12 and a half millimeters in diameter while these red ones are like 14 and maybe a little more than that. Because these are oversized, in certain positions, the two halves come apart a little bit, but thankfully those magnets still hold everything together. Another cool thing about this is for my version, I used four different colored marbles and the way you set it up is to put it together in order and then you mix it up afterwards so you know it can be solved. But you can also make versions using just three colors of marbles or only two colors of marbles, and that kind of adjusts the difficulty of this puzzle. I think this version with the four colored marbles is a really good balance between fun and frustration, that level of difficulty. I could theoretically go back to this version where every marble is a different color, but I think that would just be too difficult. I don't know if anyone actually wants to deal with that. This version right here is definitely really fun. It's great to play with, quite the mind game, I might actually have to produce these. This is like a really good puzzle game. All right, there you go, internet. About a million spherecons, that's my contribution. Is it enough for you? I already know the answer. No, it never is. Well, the good news is my next video is gonna be a very straightforward tutorial on how you can design your own spherecons from scratch. As always, I'll be putting all these files up on my mini factory for you to download for free if you've got your own printer. If you want to order a professionally printed part, I'll also put a link in the description to my Shapeways store where I have a lot of these available for sale as well as some slightly different versions. And Shapeways is really cool because you don't have to print these in two halves like you do on your regular FDM printer. You can actually get a solid single piece Spherecon. You could get it printed in stainless steel. You could get it printed in platinum. You could get it printed in so many cool materials. I know I'm gonna be ordering some. All right, but that's it for today. So there you go, Spherecons. They're awesome, they're super fun. Who am I kidding? I'll probably make more. Comment if you've got ideas. Let me know what you think about everything that's out here. Which one's your favorite? Oh my gosh, so many options. You can like, you can subscribe, you can comment. It's fun times here on YouTube land. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.